just to see where I could cut back where I'm wasting money because I don't want to waste money. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to my video today. I really appreciate the support. So guys, I got some serious things I want to talk to you guys about today. I want to talk to you about savings and having some type of savings in your financial life to help you in case of emergencies, ladies and gentlemen. They say right now about 55% of Americans report that they have absolutely zero savings zero guys that's an issue i mean no emergency savings no rainy day funds pretty much nothing they just live in paycheck to paycheck and if something happens they gotta borrow money i know over the last two three years we have dealt with covid 19 i'm having individuals staying at home layoffs happening high inflation dealing with high interest rates going up losing jobs jobs shutting down especially the service industries. I'm in retail and luckily we didn't shut down um, going through the pandemic. I work for a travel stop. So gas and diesel and all those things are essential to keep those vehicles, to keep vehicles on the road. We have dealt with a lot over the last two to three years, a lot. And we have been resilient and made it through. But guys, a lot of us still do not have any savings. Guys, we have to save money. We have to prepare ourselves for emergencies. People are hurting because they don't have emergency funds. They don't have any savings to access in case of an emergency. Guys, we just got to do better. You know, the experts say we should have three to six months of emergency savings. You know what? A six months may be a stretch for some individuals, but three months shouldn't be that hard. My emergency fund, I would just put it out there. I have a six month emergency fund. So I have $20,000 set aside in a high yield savings account that I just don't touch. I do not touch that money. It's set aside for emergencies. That emergency fund is to cover you in case of a job loss, ladies and gentlemen, not to just dip in for minor things. It's to cover me to where I can still pay my mortgage and my basic household bills. And to be honest with you, since I don't have any car debt or credit card debt, no personal loans, no student loan, things of that nature, I probably could get away with 15 grand, 12 to 15 grand, but I choose to be 20. That keeps me pretty comfortable to where I feel like I got a good sense of security, guys. Guys, let's talk about, so the average emergency in America right now is the average emergency where people may need what they will put people into a flux um, or make people stress is about $1,400. Guys, they say the average American cannot come up with $500 in case of an emergency. 60% of Americans cannot come up with $500 in case of an emergency, ladies and gentlemen. And 70% of the population cannot come up with $1,000 in case of an emergency, guys. These individuals will have to resort to borrowing from family, friends, using credit cards, um, payday loans, things of that nature to get by. Guys, we just got to do better than this. You know, like I said, at least try to shoot for a three-month emergency fund in case of a job loss or a true emergency is mainly meant for an emergency fund is mainly meant for a job loss fund but let's just say you have a car breakdown you need a transmission in your car you need four tires on your car those things are that'll run you about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars you need a transmission in your car i mean it might be two or three grand uh, you have a major car repair a major car repair can run you four to five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, I had to take take my truck in to get repaired, and my brakes were bad. But then they found out, they found out I had a brake leak, and I had to re have all my brake lines in my truck repaired. It ended up, I'm thinking I'm taking it in for brakes because my brakes felt funny, but it ended up costing me about two thousand dollars to get that repaired. But luckily, I had an emergency fund, guys. So guys, let's talk about how to start an emergency fund. What can you do to create an emergency fund? Guys, just let me say real quick, please 
like this video, share this video, and most importantly, subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys. I really appreciate the support. My channel is, is fairly new. I'm gaining traction right now, and I really appreciate the support helping me build my channel. And smashing that like button is important, so I appreciate that, guys. So, the ways that will help you build an emergency fund, guys. Number one is just take stock of your overall income and expenses. Are you got gym memberships you're not using? Do you have subscriptions you're not using? Are you just really look at your spending to see where you're wasting money? That is something I'm doing right now, guys. I mean, I got an emergency fund in place. I'm out of debt, but I'm really I'm tracking how much money I spend on a weekly basis just to see where I can cut back, where I'm wasting money because I don't want to waste money. It's like right now, I got two cars and a motorcycle. The weather's getting good, so I'm gonna start, and I only live eight miles from work, so I'm gonna start driving my motorcycle. I mean, if I can drive my motorcycle on a $20 fill up versus filling up my car for 45, 50 bucks, I'm just gonna drive my motorcycle. That just makes sense. It's summertime. So I'll just drive my motorcycle. Like right now, my heating bill, just got my heating bill. You know, I'm one of those guys, I hate air, I hate air conditioning. You know, I'll just cool my house down or cool my car down and I'll turn it off. I don't have it constantly running. So I just got my my utility bill for my gas and electric, it was 90 bucks. I'm like, heck yeah. I don't run my central air 24 seven because I don't need all that air running. So there's ways to cut guys that where you can um, save money. So just really take stock of your money, track your spending and just see where you can cut to where you can start putting money away towards an emergency fund. Number two, use windfalls. Um, for instance, you know, my job, I get quarterly bonuses. I just so happen to be at my job over 10 years now. So I get annual profit sharing payouts, things of that nature. So what I did to build my emergency fund, I use my bonuses and I use my profit sharing to build my emergency fund, guys. So that's what I did. You know, that, that those are windfalls. So I really make sure I hit my objectives at work. So I get the max bonus that I can receive. I take that money and I put it towards my emergency fund. Well, now I'm, I'm good on my emergency fund, but I put it into my investments. You know, every quarter. You know, if you get some unexpected money, you get an inheritance, somebody leave you some money, you get a tax refund, just things of that nature. You guys know where I'm going with this. Just take that extra money, put it aside towards an emergency fund to help build your emergency funds, guys. And then number three, automate your savings. If you find out that you can start sending $100 a check, $50 a check, $200 a check, I, I don't know. You have to just take stock of what you're spending and whatever you can do, automate it because it's so easy to save when you don't see the money, guys. It really is. If you don't see that money, you can save. You don't see the money. You know, you have it automatically come out, coming out your account. You don't see it. You don't notice it. You know it's, you know it's going to come out. But it's less painful in my opinion because it's gone. Yeah, so this, those are just some tips, guys, to really, for you guys to concentrate and start building an emergency fund. Because guys, the way things are going right now in this country with inflation, high interest rates, these high interest rates are really doing a lot of individuals harm financially. But I'm be honest with you, but the reason why that is is because people don't have any savings. Guys, when you talk about over half of the country lacks savings, zero savings, none whatsoever, that's a problem. And that's a problem we need to start getting under control. Guys, I couldn't imagine living my life without any type of savings. Because things happen. Life happens. A car breaks down. Blow a tire. Toilet could back up at home. Plumbing issue. I could have an electrical issue. But we spend every dime that comes in and we have to stop doing that. We have to stop doing that, spending every dime that comes in. Yes, I want you guys to have fun. I want you guys to enjoy your life. My grandfather always told me, always have something put up in case you need it. I'm not saying you gotta save every dime you have coming in, but just save something, guys. Just save something. So guys, once again, hope you enjoyed the video. Again, please 
like the video that helps the youtube algorithm recommend my video to more people my channel is growing i need your help guys to keep it growing so also with that share the video and most importantly you guys help me build my channel subscribe to my channel i'm working trying really hard to build my youtube channel just by giving good useful information to you guys guys like they say knowledge is power knowledge is power so guys once again i want to thank you guys for tuning into my channel today i appreciate the support and guys again this is how i always end financial decisions you make today will impact your financial life tomorrow financial freedom team with frank i am out